Concepts of Surgery Join our YouTube channel to learn surgery in a simple way. How does Helicobacter pylori survive the extreme acidic hostile environment of stomach? How does H. pylori cause duodenal ulcer, when it can infect only gastric mucosa? Can H. pylori infect only humans? How is Helicobacter linked to gallbladder cancer? What are the seven pathologies linked to H. pylori? Can healthcare workers get infected due to contact with H. pylori patients? Let us find out the answers in this video. Main challenge for any bacteria to enter through oral route is to face gastric acid. Acidic pH, which can reach up to 2, is enough to kill almost 99% of bacteria ingested. So how does Helicobacter pylori survive this acid? Not only survive but also cause numerous pathologies in stomach? Helicobacter pylori has two important features. One is presence of flagella and other presence of urease enzyme in it. Up to 15% protein in H. pylori is urease enzyme. Urease acts on urea in surrounding and breaks urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. Ammonium ion alkalizes surrounding area. So H. pylori creates alkaline environment all around it by help of urease. In a way it forms a shield of ammonium around it protecting it from acid. But sooner or later this mechanism will get exhaust. So H. pylori uses flagella to burrow inside mucus layer and reach epithelium. Now it is protected from acid by mucus layer. Once it reaches epithelium, it does not directly invade epithelial cells but attaches to them and produces several toxins like VACA and CAGA. These toxin incite intense reaction from immune cells which causes gastric mucosal inflammation. So, if Helicobacter is not having flagella or urease enzyme, it is non-pathogenic type. As it cannot survive in gastric acid environment, humans are the only known reservoir for Helicobacter pylori. It is transmitted by oral ingestion. Once it is cured, there is no protective immunity. Reinfection can occur. In developing countries, infection usually occurs in childhood. H. pylori infection can transmit directly from person to person. Hence family members and health care workers are at risk. H. pylori causes two types of gastritis. Chronic antral gastritis with sparing of the proximal stomach occurs in about 10% of infected patients. And this predisposes to peptic ulcer disease. The other 90% of helicobacter infected patients develop chronic inflammation of the proximal stomach. Corpus dominant gastritis, which can lead to gastric cancer in about 1% to 3% of this group. Up to 90% of patients with duodenal ulcers, and at least 70% of patients with gastric ulcers, have H. pylori infection. H. pylori can infect only gastric mucosa so how does it causes duodenal ulcers? In patients with duodenal ulcers caused by helicobacter, the associated antral gastritis leads to relative hypergastrinemia by depleting antral somatostatin, the primary inhibitor of antral gastrin release. Hypergastrinemia occurs leading to increased acid production. Since more acid spills into duodenum, the duodenal mucosa gets converted into antral epithelium. This is a protective response, as antral mucosa can handle acid better. So H. pylori which infects antral epithelium can now live in antral mucosa of duodenum. So similar to gastric ulcers, duodenal ulcers can occur. How does H. pylori decrease antral somatostatin release? The mechanism of decreased antral somatostatin synthesis and release may be related to 1. Antral alkalinization due to helicobacter urease. Acid in the antrum releases somatostatin. 2. Toxic cytokine effect on antral D cells. 3. Helicobacter production of nilfomethyl histamine, an H3 receptor agonist, which binds H3 receptors on the antral D cell and decreases somatostatin release. What are the pathologies linked to helicobacter? Helicobacter pylori causes gastric cancer, dyspepsia, peptic ulcer disease, both duodenal and gastric, hyperplastic gastric polyps, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, mald lymphoma. Mald lymphoma once diagnosed, is treated with anti-H pylori treatment. Another species Helicobacter bilis is linked with gallbladder cancer. How is H. pylori infection diagnosed? H. pylori infection can be diagnosed by histologic evaluation of gastric biopsies and the rapid urease test on fresh biopsies. The culture of H. pylori is not routine. It is usually reserved for recurrent infection and antibiotic sensitivity testing when second-line therapy has failed.
Non-invasive methods for diagnosis of H. pylori infection include the urea breath test, serology, and detection of stool antigen. The urea breath test has a sensitivity and specificity greater than 90%. It is helpful for initial infection diagnosis and follow-up after eradication therapy since it is positive only in the presence of active infection. The stool antigen test is another non-invasive test to detect active H. pylori infection. Because H. pylori induces a robust immunologic response, serological testing can be used. A positive serology persists after eradication of H. pylori infection, so serology does not help confirm the successful treatment of helicobacter infection. In urea breath test, urea is radiolabeled with carbon and ingested. Urea's enzyme would break this urea into ammonia and carbon dioxide. This CO2 will have radio-labeled carbon and is absorbed in bloodstream and removed by lung, where it can be detected in breath. Mammalian cells do not have urease enzyme, so if any urease enzyme is present in stomach, it must be Helicobacter pylori, as other urease-producing bacteria are not able to survive in stomach. In Ackler hydria, which means low acid production in stomach, False positive test may occur due to other urease producing bacteria growing in stomach. Proton pump inhibitor, antibiotics and sucralfit may give false negative result and these are stopped 1 to 2 weeks before urea breath test. How is H. pylori infection treated? First line treatment is clarithromycin plus amoxicillin plus proton pump inhibitor. If clarithromycin resistance is documented, then bismuth based quadruple therapy is given. Treatment is given for at least two weeks. Eradication should be confirmed by non-invasive tests like urea breath test. Concepts of surgery. Join our YouTube channel to learn surgery in a simple way.